editing podcasts just got stupid fast. SnapPod automatically cuts between speakers as they talk, just match your audio to the video and hit auto edit. This plugin is finally out of beta and fully released. Hey professionals, Today I'm going to be showing you the fully released SnapPod version 1.1. Now before we get into the tool, I really need to just talk about the pricing because SnapPod isn't cheap. And we have done this for various reasons. So a big one being that we want this to be a lifetime license. So you pay for this once and you get it forever. And so the price is $250 USD. For a lot of people that might be a bit of a sticker shock and I totally understand and I sympathize with you. Now in saying that, I do fully believe in this price. I've talked to a lot of editors through my Discord, interacting with them on YouTube, getting to understand and learn how their business works. And for the vast majority of them, SnapPod is gonna save way more time than what $250 is worth to them. Now in saying that, if this isn't worth it to you from what you can see, what I can say is do join our Discord and have a talk in the profit chat room. It's a completely free space where editors get to ask questions on what they're struggling with in their business and how to move it forward. We have no course to sell, there's no upsell there. It's just a community of editors helping each other out. To begin with, let's just talk about the base structure of how it's gonna work. So the first thing you need to do before using SnapPod is set up your timeline for a podcast how you normally would. Put down your videos, put down your audios, make sure they're lined up. And then once that's done, you're ready to go on to the next step, which is open SnapPod. So I'm just gonna go into workspace, workflow integrations and open SnapPod. So the first thing you need to do when you use SnapPod is you wanna be telling it which video tracks are lined with which audio tracks. If we take a look at the timeline over here, we can see that my audio is on audio one and that my video is on the video track one. So in the first section here, I'm just gonna put in video one, audio one. And then in the second tracks, you'll see we've got the awesome Kari QHD. You should definitely check out his YouTube channel. And what we know is that he's on video two, audio two. So we'll just put that in like so. And then moving on, we have the wide angles. Now, typically wide angles don't have any audio associated to them. So we've got an entirely different algorithm to help determine where they get placed. So I'm just gonna click the wide angle instead of the camera and then choose video three, which is where the wide angle is placed. Once you've done this, we can actually just go ahead and hit auto edit. So in a moment, you're going to see the automatic podcast editor take full action and actually place down the clips. How long did that actually take to process the audio? Well, it was done in three batches and roughly speaking, it took about two minutes to process a three hour and 15 minute podcast. So we're nearly ready for the auto editing to begin and you'll get this little loading screen here. What's happening here is that SnapPod's now handing the editing decisions back to Resolve so that it can place your clips on the timeline when needed. Cool, now it's just about ready to place down the clips, but we've got this warning message. And we've actually done this on purpose because if SnapPod's ever going to do anything that's going to manipulate your timeline, we wanna let you know and make sure you want us to do that. So what's happening here is SnapPod's telling us to get the most accurate edits possible. It's going to compound the, any of the tracks that have cuts in them. So in this case, it's me and Kyrie's close-up shots. And if you wanna get a full detailed breakdown of what that's actually going to look like, you can click on these learn how buttons and it'll take you to these detailed explanations of what we're about to do. I know what it's going to do, so I'm just gonna hit continue. And just like this, never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got an automatic podcast being laid out right in front of our eyes. So let's just check out here. Sure. Yeah, well, that client also has products and has some courses and stuff like that. So that's mm -hmm. already a business. Yeah, but that's, that's at exactly the same it. time. Sorry, you go. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and they, they... Awesome. So you can see here that that was actually not the best edit. And so now we're going to be getting into a bit more of the advanced features and how we can refine these to be better. So if we look here, it's picked up on me. I do a little speaking moment, then it cuts back to Kyrie. Probably didn't make sense to have that cut. It was just a little too quick, a little too sharp for my own tastes. So in this case, I'm just going to go down to the advanced settings and change the ignored cuts up to 1.5. So now I'm simply saying, hey... Yeah, any shots that are one and a half seconds or less, just ignore them, don't cut to them. And if we even give a quick little look here, yeah, we can see this is exactly one second. So now if I go back and instead of pressing auto edit and having to wait that two minutes and a bit for all that processing to happen, I'm just going to hit update cuts. I'll put a little marker here so we can check back on what this looks like. 
And just like that, we've got a new style being laid out really quickly. I really love the update cuts button, even though it's not the highlight of the app, it really allows us to experiment and get creative with the automation and have just more control while doing it in less time. So going back over here and having a quick look at this marker, give this a quick little play. And probably the context if it's a bit just... more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's looking a lot better already. Let's run into another thing you might be thinking. It's really hard to review this because when we zoom out, everything's laid out on a single track. So I'm just going to clear this one so we can have a more clear view. And I'm going to change the mode from single track to multi-track. And again, just hit update cuts because we've already processed and analyzed the audio. And now if we take a look and zoom in on this, you can see here that it's actually laying out each video clip on its own unique track, which now gives us a really good visual indication of who's speaking when and how long they're showing up. And it really just makes editing a whole lot easier for me. So let's get into more of these advanced features and how it's gonna make sure the automation edits to your style and actually saves you time. If we go down, you're gonna see we, the next one is the cut timing, which is basically going to adjust it early or late depending on the setting. Personally, I like having this at negative 0.2, which means it's going to make sure every shot cuts 0.2 seconds early, which just gives enough room to see someone's reaction before they start speaking. And it helps show that this is a conversation and not something that is just two people speaking about the same topic. Now, I do know on the other hand, I've had clients in the past and they've asked me to edit like it's been edited live. In that case, we wanna make these edits happen a little late. So we might go 0.2 or if you've got a really slow live editor, maybe it's 0.5, but I'm gonna put it back to what I personally prefer, which is negative 0.2. And I'm also going to use the silence deletion. So I'm gonna just set this to light. And then for the wide angle frequency, I really like having the wide angle show up quite a lot. I think it really helps improve the engagement because it reminds people that this is a conversation and not two people talking about the same topic. So I'm gonna switch that to high and I'm going to clear these again. And before I edit, I'm going to go into the preset and I'm gonna just save this as my favorite so that when I ever want to use it again, I can just simply go into the select presets and choose the one I want. So go up to here, hit update cuts. And just like this, we're going to get a podcast edited very close to the style that I want. Now, as a little disclaimer, we don't have any sort of like AI technology that's going to like see if someone's picking their nose. So it's always good practice to make sure you actually go through the videos and watch them and make sure it's edited exactly the way you want. And in terms of the silence deletion with just the light settings, we've been able to cut out about seven minutes of silences. So we're not actually done with the time saving features. We're getting something really close to our style, but can we make this even quicker? Yes. If I go up to the top here and click this little cogwheel icon, it's gonna take us to our preference settings. Generally speaking, if we had to talk about the difference between the two settings in these pages is we've made this first page really dependent on what the podcast needs. And we've made this the stuff that you'd wanna set up once and forget. So when we have a look at this, we have leave markers at ignored cuts. And what this is going to do is if SnapPod has to make a decision between cutting to someone when there are more than one people speaking, it's going to drop a marker on the timeline so you can easily check those moments and see if it's made the right decision. So I'm just gonna turn this on and let's just see what SnapPod does. Let's just zoom in on one of these random markers here. Here we can see that Kyrie was kind of speaking and then I'm speaking quite loud here. Chances are I cut him off. Let's give this a look. Yeah. A thousand dollars a day. Holy shit, I'm not even doing that. But let's, okay, let's talk there. Let's, let's go there. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. Aim higher. <laughs> yeah, aim higher. $30,000 a day. Like, woo! Uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. I'm actually really happy with that edit. Like that whole section. Yeah, you can see that it, we've ignored Kyrie's cut here. And it's, but it's honestly, that's probably what I would have preferred. Now, going down a little bit, we have a few other more advanced settings. We got stuff like noise floors, which is essentially telling SnapPod to ignore any audio below negative 25 decibels. It's just going to help make sure that when SnapPod goes to make editing decisions, it's not considering any of that noise whatsoever. Moving on from the noise floor, we have the wide angle. Now, this 
wide angle algorithm has been one of the most fun things to work with the community to build. I had no idea how important wide angles are to podcasts until I started speaking to all these different studios and editors. And the basic message they gave me was that if you want to remind your audience that this is a conversation between two people and not just two people speaking on the same subject, use wide angles more often. And so that was really awesome. Saying on top of this though, we do want to expand upon this wide algorithm to make it even more customizable. So having things like if two people are speaking really loudly, cut to the wide angle. Or if you want to have it say every 15 seconds is a wide angle, then a 15 second gap, then a 15 second wide angle. There are plenty of you that like that style. We are looking at putting that in. So even though this is the full release of SnapPod, we are not done building the features out and making it this the best podcast editing tool you can ever have. Moving on to this one, it's pretty simple, but again, saves you a lot of time. So worth knowing about, and this is basically going to be your default track layout. So this is going to make sure that if you're editing the same kind of podcast day in, day out, that you're able to not have to set this up every single time. Say you have these two cameras and a wide angle is I'm just gonna add one more camera. I'm gonna add a wide angle. I'm just going to line them up the way I just did at the beginning of this video. And I'm just gonna hit save track layout. So now every time we go to open and close snap pod, you're gonna see right here that our preferred track has been already loaded up, just helping save a little bit more time. So with those features out of the way, I probably need to talk about something that's even more important. And that's the people who helped fund and build this product, which was the early adopters, the beta testers. You were all so incredible and so patient with me. And it really blew my mind what this experience was like. When we first came into SnapPod and asking the community to help put it together, we had an estimate that it would take somewhere between one to three months to build. And roughly speaking, six months later, here we are. And throughout the entire journey, every time I had to tell them that there was going to be a delay on something here or something there, all I was met with was absolute pure positivity. And it just blew me away every single time. And so one of the big things this reaffirmed was that honesty is king. As long as I kept letting everyone know honestly where we were, where we were getting to and how long we think it was going to take, and we also made sure that if they weren't happy with this new time that we were going to give them a refund, everyone's happy. And even though I was offering that, I was still expecting some level of backlash, but I just never got it. And I cannot thank the community enough. And all I can say from this is that the DaVinci Resolve community is the fucking best. <laughs> like you guys, absolutely incredible. And I'm definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. I am so excited to keep building more tools like this. So until next time, Happy editing, everyone.